All right. Hi, everyone. My name is John Herlman, and today I'm talking about MCAP. It's a new file format for improving the state of the art in robotics recording. I work at Foxglove. Just a quick tech. Is, is the mic working okay? Okay. Thanks. I, I work at Foxglove, and previously I was at Verdant uh, working on ag tech, and before that, uh, Cruise on self driving cars. My background is in high performance computing and simulation. And when I brought this background over into robotics, one of the things that jumped out at me is that uh, recording, data recorded, is one of the common uh, links between simulation and the real world. It's also your limiting factor often when you're debugging. Uh, the fidelity of the recording informs how much and how quickly you can iterate on problems. So I've spent a lot of time thinking about how to make recording better. At Cruise, uh, along with some of my current colleagues uh, working back at Cruise, we thought about the Ross bag system for our Ross One uh, self-driving car and made a number of improvements to it uh, in a internal uh, edits on how to improve uh, the right throughput, especially when rolling over to new files, and how we can recover the most data possible in the event of a crash or a system failure. Verdant, one of the early design decisions was to not use ROS and to build a new robotics framework. Uh, this also implied building a new file format for recording, new APIs for reading and writing it, and all the tooling. At Foxglove, we see this is basically the status quo. You're either in the ROS ecosystem and you're using all of that tooling out of the box, or you're out there building a new file format, new APIs, new tools, and they're often not as mature. But back in the ROS ecosystem, things are not perfect e either. Uh, we saw a lot of issues going from ROS1 to ROS2 uh, around the storage format. So ROS2 uses SQLite as its uh, current default storage backing. Uh, SQLite files are difficult to stream over the network, um, to do random access seeking, and to only fetch a subset of data. Uh, we can only write single message uh, compression. Uh, we can't do batch compression on SQLite. Uh, so the, uh, the compression efficiency went down. Uh, they do not currently contain message definitions. So if you've iterated on your robot in the last week, you're working on a different computer, you haven't done a git pull, you can't play back those bag files anymore. Um, and finally, the SQLite library itself has a single implementation. Um, this is generally using um, bindings to different languages. Um, but in the web story, uh, we have a lot of issues with uh, playing back of files in a browser. So we've had a lot of conversations about what is the right approach to recording and uh, what is the right file format. And they came back to what do we actually need from the file format? And with heavy inspiration from the ROS2 design documents, I came up with a list. Uh, we want serialization agnosticism. We want uh, to be able to record ROS1 data, ROS2. And ROS2 uses a pluggable uh, approach to serialization. They don't force a single uh, format, even though there is a default. And we want to embrace this, and we also want to embrace non-ROS systems. Determinism is a deep topic in robotics that I won't fully get into, but for the purpose of a file format, we need to record timestamps and support playing back in timestamp ordering. The format should be self-describing. We don't want to go fetch auxiliary data during uh, decode time to figure out what's in this file and how do I read it. In robotics, you see lots of different types of data. You have uh, high frequency, small messages for pose updates. You have large payloads for camera images and LiDAR. Uh, we can't pick a format that's going to optimize for one use case at the expense of another. The, form the format needs to be write optimized. We're talking about recording, after all. So if you can get an index written at record time, that's great. But if the write throughput tanks, then the format just won't work. In ROS systems, we can't expect all publishers to come online in a single lockstep. Uh, new publishers are showing up over time during recording, and so we have to support adding new topics and new message definitions to the file as it's being written. 
the file should be corruption resilient. Um, robots fail in the real world. They have problems. The storage media fails. They crash. We need to detect when a crash has happened, when we have incomplete data, and also when some of that data was written incorrectly due to uh, physical medium corruption or maybe software bugs. Indexing here means that we don't want to write a file and then immediately turn around and have to write a different file uh, in a different format with indexes. Uh, this slows down de debugging, it slows down your operations pipeline. We want to take the recording directly off the robot in the ideal case and bring it right into your tooling and figure out what happened. And finally, we need to be moving towards standardization in robotics. Uh, this obviously excludes proprietary formats, but it can also exclude things like SQLite, where there's only one implementation, and uh, standards bodies generally require two independent implementations for ratifying a new standard. So armed with uh, this set, we went out and looked at a lot of existing file formats. Um, the full write-up is online, you can go read it. Uh, I won't go into all of it here, but the summary is that nothing that we looked at checked all the boxes for robotics recording. So we, uh, we have MCAP now. In network recording, you have PCAP for packet captures, and in robotics recording, you now have MCAP. I'll go through a few features of, uh, of MCAP. We have heterogeneous data support. Uh, this means that you can store per topic different serialization formats. Uh, we support ROS1, we support ROS2, but you can add your own. You can also do things that are self-describing, like video or JPEG. Uh, we've added uh, metadata and attachments, and I'm hoping this opens up some new use cases. Why aren't we putting ROS parameters in the recordings? What about your camera calibration files? or attaching crash logs after the recording's finished. The file format's been designed with performance uh, from the beginning. We want this to scale all the way from uh, an ESP32 microcontroller up to a massive high throughput system that is uh, recording multiple files. Uh, so this is an append-only format. It's simply sequential writing of, of data and indexes as you go. All the features, indexing, compression, CRCs, can be toggled on or off, depending on the use case. Um, and because it's append-only, we can also target uh, a different platform. We can write uh, across a network or to another machine as we go. Uh, if you do write indexes at runtime, or you go and add them later, uh, you get efficient seeking. You can iterate over a subset of topics. Uh, you can do range requests. This works uh, well with uh, NFS, with HTTP, um, and you can get quick summarization data that's tacked on at the end. The files are self-contained. In ROS, this means putting the message definitions in IDL. For another system, it might mean JSON schema or your own custom serialization format, and the schema's for it. Uh, we wanna make sure that any file uh, can be dragged and dropped into a program and fully parsed as long as we understand what's in it. Uh, we don't want to go requesting auxiliary data just to decode it. The, uh, the design checklist has been met. Um, we, we set out and created this list, and then we created the file format that we think meets all these needs. You can go find the specification for it online. It's uh, meant to be consumed by a human and in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, if you want to go write your own library, you should be able to look at this and come up with something. Um, we also uh, provide a number of libraries out of the box. So when you're reading the specification, the word ROS and robot doesn't show up anywhere. Um, it's meant to be usable for anything where you see temporal pub sub data. Um, if your data looks like that, then you can use MCAP. One of the parts of due diligence in creating a new file format is benchmarking. So we've done a lot of benchmarking. I won't go through all of it here, but this is a one sub slice of it where we looked at the ROS2 recording system, our MCAP plugin versus SQLite. I'm showing two of the variants here, even though the full suite runs a whole bunch. Um, the patterns hold across all the different variants that I've looked at, though. Uh, this particular data comes from an NVIDIA Jetson Nano. And the place where MCAP is shining uh, the most is in small messages. 
Uh, so think uh, something on the order of like a high frequency pose update. Uh, you see uh, a large multiple on the right throughput. When you step up the message size, uh, the throughput of the system for both SQLite and MCAP is gonna go up a lot. Notice the y-axis here is a different magnitude. Uh, but we still see a two to four X performance game on MCAP versus the uh, SQLite, or sorry, the, uh, yes, the SQLite configurations. And that gap doesn't really start to close until you get to large messages. Here, we're writing messages that are larger than the default chunk size, so we're flushing every message to disk uh, in the MCAP config. Even though the gap is fairly close here, uh, we're using default configurations, which on SQLite, uh, default means there's an unbounded memory buffer. Uh, that's all gonna get lost in the case of a crash, and there's no compression. So you're getting small buffers uh, flush to disk constantly, you're getting compression, you're getting CRC checking, all that for free essentially in MCAP here. File size, we don't see a big difference. Um, mostly this was to make sure we didn't make any mistakes uh, or do anything inefficiently. The uncompressed file size is, is relatively equivalent uh, for this particular data set, came from a self-driving car. And uh, it was also, fairly close on the uh, streaming compression, doing per message versus chunk compression. However, this data set was using array-based messages where the batching was already really happening at the message level. If your robot is writing small, repeatable messages, um, you should see a bit better savings on switching over to MCAP for your compression. It comes with a command line interface. Uh, anyone can go download this. It runs on any platform. There are no dependencies. Uh, just download, install like any other utility. It has the same ergonomics as the ROS1, ROS bag command. So you get all of that for ROS2 now. Uh, this, um, this means that you're no longer doing uh, custom YAML files or writing little scripts in ROS2 to do common tasks like compression and re-indexing. And we have Pretty good tooling support now. Uh, all of ROS2 uh, now supports MCAP. Uh, Foxglove Studio, our data platform, and the popular Plot Juggler tool. We have a number of libraries that we maintain um, and are accepting more. Uh, the Rust one is a community contribution that's getting up to speed quickly. These are all passing the same set of conformance tests on reading and writing, and they have roughly the same feature parity. Although each one is tailored for its own language, it's a native implementation with no bindings, and we try to adapt the ergonomics of that language. I'll step through uh, a few of the examples. I don't wanna do a whole code di deep dive, but just to show you what the APIs look like. This is a very high level API that we have for reading in Python. Um, one important note about this is that there's no dependency on a ROS environment. You do a pip install and you can run this anywhere. The same goes for the writing side. Here we're showing writing ROS2. Uh, I've put the message definition right in the example so that we don't need to source a ROS2 environment to get access to it, but you can do that as well. C++ always gets more verbose, but same idea. Uh, here we're writing, we're reading and writing and the uh, plain text, and I'm not using ROS because we don't yet have ROS1 or ROS2 native deserialization built into C++. If it's something that you're interested in, come talk to us and we can prioritize it. So everything I've shown today is working in ROS2. I think the galactic sync is just about to happen or maybe just did, and so everything from Foxy to rolling is supported. Uh, you apt install a package and you start using it. The MCAP utility can be downloaded. You can convert all your existing ROS2 and ROS1 bags over, um, or you can use it to edit your new data. On the ROS1 side, we have uh, the APIs, we have conversion. There's no recorder yet, but if this is something you want, uh, come talk to us again, we can prioritize it. So thank you, thanks for listening. Uh, you now have a simple set of instructions to make your robot run faster with less overhead, more reliable recording, smaller files, and better tooling. So with that, I'll turn it over to Q&A. Great, thank you, John. Look like we already got a couple questions. Uh, go ahead. Have you compared uh, MCAP performance with ROS1 bag recording? 
We don't have a set of benchmarks that have directly done that. Um, I've done some informal testing, and I believe it's roughly on par or, or um, somewhat faster in some cases, but I don't have anything that I can back that with data yet. Uh, ROS1 bags heavily informed the uh, design of the file format, and so we hope they would be on the same par. Okay, uh, however, Z standard compression is, is uh, we found a, a really big boost. All right. Uh, I'm happy that there is another implementation for the storage. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is about the benchmarking methodology. Uh, I, I would like to uh, have some more information about how you benchmark that and whether uh, you tried something else than Nano. This could be quite platform dependent. And did you use the ROS2 benchmarking packages? Uh, so we have a, a, a fork of, or a, a, a PR on the ROS2 benchmarking. Mm -hmm. um, let's see how much time do I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, come find me after, and I want to go into deeper dive on this. Uh, but the high level is that we did run the ROS2 benchmarks. We adapted them to run MCAP. Um, those are ultimately testing a message drop rate. And well, we do have a separate set of benchmarks that I could show you that um, show that we do a lot better on uh, the drop rate, especially when you compare um, the resilient writing of SQLite to MCAP. Um, it's hard to do an apples to apples comparison with the default SQLite because it uses an unbounded memory buffer. Uh, it's hard to drop things when you're just writing them to an unbounded buffer. Uh, so we generally just see 100% there. It's, it's an odd test. Uh, we did come up with a new set that was focusing on write throughput, and that's what I'm showing here. Uh, as far as the different platforms, um, I liked the NVIDIA Jetson for the pre presentation because they show large deltas. Uh, those deltas shrink, but the, the relative improvements um, stay the same shape on my Mac M1 and my Linux desktop. Those are the things that I've tested so far. Uh, yeah, one crucial question, what is the cache parameter that you use for benchmarks? The, the cache size, yes. Cache size, let's yeah. see. So we keep all of it at the default. I believe the default is uh, 10 megabytes. Um, we've tested by turning that way down um, and got different interesting results, but for the purpose of showing What's going to happen if I simply run this command and switch to MCAP instead of this without changing anything else? We wanted to make sure the benchmarks captured that, that scenario. All right, thanks. Great, uh, thank you, John. Ooh, there we go. Hey, excuse me. Excuse, excuse me, I still want, is it allows to, to have still one question? Uh, sure, we can do one more question. I'm sorry. And, uh, uh, I'm actually a web developer, and I'm exactly contributing the web standards to WCC as well. Therefore, actually, we have, I believe as a web developer, we, are, we would be very happy to see such blames that uh, the web standard is still not sufficient to have such very uh, rich uh, uh, format support in the robotic uh, development. And therefore, actually, my question would be that uh, whether such uh, issues and uh, uh, st uh, the, the struggling point uh, experienced in your uh, for matter maybe seeking and the designing could also be shared as some sort of issues into WCC standards. For example, I believe there, would, there has been many uh, abundant amount of uh, uh, formats format focusing on both self-description uh, self as well as self-contained. So I wanna, I wanna make sure I capture um, the, the gist of your question and, and feel free to clarify, but uh, we have been doing uh, this development with web not in mind from the beginning. Our, our, our tools that we build are all web-based, and uh, the very first implementation of MCAP was a type skipped prototype. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that the uh, support, the language support is there, and that we don't have any performance concerns. Um, also that uh, everything works well over the web. Um, be happy to talk further if, uh, uh, after this. Thanks very much, because, uh, because, uh, be because I believe both JSON as, uh, as well as XML are all initially defined from WCC, de de defined from web. Therefore, if there is exactly some sort of a special point that is still not covered in current web, f web formats, if it could be shared and as well as merged into web formats, I believe the web standards could also be much more sufficient as well. Yeah, yeah, I would love to talk about that. A lot of this was driven from the uh, need for uh, an efficient binary serialization, which we don't see often in web. Thanks, thanks very much. Great, thank you, John.